So I think that this may have um, a benefit when it comes to systemizing. Systemizing is the ability to analyze a system, any kind of system, or to build a system. It might be a mechanical system like figuring out how a computer works. It might be an abstract system like mathematics. It could be a natural system like watching um, the weather and trying to predict how the weather works. Or it might be a collectible system like a stamp collection or like a collection of CDs at home which may be more or less systematically organized. The point about systems is that they follow rules, they have laws, and when you systemize, what you're trying to do is understand how the system works so that you can predict how it will behave. Attention to detail is really important when it comes to systemizing. So if you just take the example of mathematics, if you're not paying attention to each number in a series of digits, then when it comes to a calculation, the answer you're going to get is going to be wrong. So the detail really matters when you're trying to understand uh, a system. We've been looking to see whether there are uh, differences in autism in the interest in systems. So we designed something called the systemizing quotient. And uh, each of the questions on this questionnaire uh, asks you how interested you are in a different kind of system. Here we've got a question about the electrical system in your home, whether you'd be able to fix the electrical wiring if there was a problem with it. And you can see the results from many questions like this, that this time we found men in the population were scoring higher than women in terms of their interest in systems, but adults with Asperger's syndrome were scoring even higher than people in the general population, very focused on systems and how they work. That was just a questionnaire, but here we have a different kind of test which looks at ability. It's a little physics test. So we show people um, pictures of little mechanical systems, and we're asking them to figure out how they work. And I won't go through the details of this one, but again, it's a multiple choice. And uh, for those of you who are interested, the correct answer to this is C. Um, but what you can see is that there's a sex difference, a gender difference in the population with men scoring higher than women on this test, which actually comes from a selection test into engineering. Uh, but here we can see children with Asperger's and a comparison group. And the, I think the exciting result here is that when we gave children with Asperger's 20 of these little problems, they actually scored higher than the comparison group on this test. So you can see they were scoring about 16 out of 20 compared to the typical group only scoring 10. This result is all the more remarkable when I tell you about how old the children were. In the comparison group, the kids with no diagnosis were teenagers. They were aged 12 to 16 years old. The children with Asperger's syndrome were actually younger. They were only aged 8 to 11 years old. And despite being younger, they were actually performing at a higher level on this test of understanding systems. So we should keep in mind that autism is a disability when it comes to making sense of the social world, making sense of people, and making sense of emotions and communication. But this same disability can also lead to areas of strength in, uh, in, in tests of uh, understanding systems. I'm going to jump ahead because I want to now address this whole question about um, the link with being male. What we've seen is that across many of these tests, women and men, boys and girls, um, perform differently on these tests. And uh, the obvious question to raise is whether these, uh, these differences between boys and girls are the result of some biological difference or whether they're simply the result of experience and culture. One way to address this is to look at newborn babies. What we've been doing in Cambridge is working with physicians in the local maternity hospital to carry out, I think, a very unique study 
where we tested newborn babies, they were 24 hours old, boys and girls, to see if there are any gender differences, even at birth. So the way this experiment, this study was conducted, there were just over 100 babies in the study, and each baby was filmed whilst they were looking at one of two objects, one at a time. The first object was a human face, and the second was a mechanical mobile. And we simply filmed the babies for how long they looked at each kind of object. What we were interested in was whether there'd be any difference between boys and girls in terms of their interest um, towards a social stimulus, a face, or a non-social stimulus, a mechanical mobile. So let's go straight to the results, which you can see at the bottom here. And what we found was that more boys than girls looked longer at the mechanical mobile, 43% compared to 17. In contrast, more girls than boys looked longer at the human face, 36% compared to 25. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a very uh, important result because it's telling us that right at birth, boys and girls differ in terms of their attention to different areas of the environment, with girls being more likely to pay attention to the social world, the world of faces and emotions, and boys being more likely to pay attention to, in this case, mechanical objects um, or aspects of the non-social world. But I want to highlight that this doesn't apply to all boys and all girls. It only fitted 43% of the boys showing one profile and 36% of the girls showing another profile. So these are just differences that emerge on average when you compare groups of boys and groups of girls. And then part of the research question is why a particular boy or a particular girl may be either typical or atypical for their sex. You can also see on this table that we looked at babies who were um, as interested in the face as they were in the mobile. So a proportion of babies looked equally long at one or the other. So once again, we have to be very cautious not to uh, overgeneralize these results. We have to see that although males and females are diverging, on average, they don't apply to every boy or every girl. But even finding any difference at birth in terms of psychology suggests that there must be a biological basis or partly biological explanation. And the question is, what, that, what might that be? In the final part of my lecture, I'm going to tell you about the research we've been doing looking at hormones in the womb particularly testosterone, to try to understand why boys and girls may develop differently. So the way this research has been conducted is to take advantage of the fact that some women in pregnancy have amniocentesis. It's about 6% of women who have an amnio, and as you know, um, you have the baby in the amniotic sac surrounded by amniotic fluid and when a woman has an amnio, it's usually in order to take out some of the fluid, the amniotic fluid, to analyze it for chromosomal abnormalities, typically because the baby is thought to be at risk for developing Down syndrome. What we've been doing is asking these women for their consent to also analyze the amniotic fluid for hormones, particularly testosterone, because the baby produces its own testosterone, some of which ends up in that amniotic fluid. And we're interested to do this because of animal research, which points to the importance of testosterone in brain development. So what we've found, what has been found by other scientists, is that if you inject testosterone, fetal testosterone, into the amniotic fluid, Let's say this is a rat. This is how these uh, experiments can be done with animals. Some of the testosterone will be taken up by the blood and go into the brain. And when you look at that female rat later on after birth and uh, look at her behavior, 
her behavior is much more like a typical male rat. So uh, an example would be that if you leave male and female rats to run through mazes, males will usually run through the maze more quickly than females. They have better spatial ability. But female rats who've been given extra testosterone in the womb or at birth are as fast as any of the males. So her behavior has become masculinized. If you then look at the female rat's brain at post-mortem, her brain is much more like a typical male brain if she's been treated with extra testosterone. What this is telling us is that testosterone has an effect on brain development and is, plays a role in masculinizing the brain. Testosterone, as you know, is produced uh, much more